Let's uh, dive in the beginning of your career. At what age did you discover you had a passion for strength and conditioning? Um, well, I'd probably say going to the gym was something of a bit of solitude for me when I was pretty young. Around like 15 or 14 or 15, I probably started going to the gym. And then um, as things sort of a few turns for the worst in my life, it was somewhere where I sort of just went to escape things. I'd go late at night, um, like after everyone had left because it was 24-7. And um, I actually thought I wanted to be a physio because I've got a lot of um, people in the medical field in my family. And probably first year, end of first year in uni, I was still pretty solid on physio. Um, and then end of second year, it just sort of all transitioned. I was like, I love this stuff. I'm um, friends with elite athletes. Like it just um, was something that, gravitated really naturally i think um so probably actually only about 19 and you mentioned geelong falcons take us through how you yeah. got a foot in the door there and teed up that uh experience yeah uh so i was looking for i think it was my second year or third year placement for uni um and then yeah I, one of my best mates um played at the falcons so he knew the high performance manager there um, put me onto him, Matt Critchley. Um, he's done some really good things um, at Falcons. They won the flag together in 2017. Um, and I just spoke to Critch and it was really just a, um, a way in, I guess, and um, started there and did the three nights a week at Recovery Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and then I'd be at um, games on Saturdays wherever I, I wasn't playing football in Tasmania at the time. Um, so yeah, I was spending three nights a week there and that was really, really good for me to sort of have the first exposure of youth athletes. How important is it getting that experience and foot in the door while you're still developing as an S and C? It's invaluable, man. Like, even though I think like I've made really good strides in that area, there's now taking on this role at Caulfield where it's more high performance type stuff and I'm managing the people who are coming in and out of drills. So. Yeah, there's so much to learn in this industry and if you want to be a, a HPM down the road, you've sort of got to be across all areas of it and you've got to know how to communicate to numerous people. So um, no matter where you start, it, it might be a bit of an ego check starting at a local football club or wherever, or the local swimming pool, like, it doesn't matter where it is, but that experience of just working with people and talking and uh, figuring out solutions to things is so invaluable. You can't sort of we get stuck in this mindset there and I was the same. I thought I'd leave uni by 21, 22 and I'd walk straight in the door. You see Jack Russell was winning a flag at, at Port Adelaide at 23 and that gets sort of glorified and we're all in a rush to get there. But um, this experience that you get along the way at these local levels, these grassroots, it's um, if you can sort of talk to these people, you're going to be fine later on down the track. You live with uh, James Warpole. Will Day, Harrison Pepper, how, how has that come about? Uh, talk about your connection with, with these guys. Uh, yeah. What have you learned from living with, with elite professional athletes? Yeah, so Warps and I went to school together. Um, so I moved to Western Heights in year nine um, and I just sort of clicked in with James's group and um, we pretty quickly became best mates and it was just us at every day, every day at school together after our other mates had left and become tradies and in terms of what you you learn from them, um, I think the best time for, for me to learn from them is the off-season period where I get to spend a bit more time with them and they're home during the day and I get to be home during the day sometimes and we, we get to train some, with each other and we do running some of the time or we do weights and that's when you sort of get an insight into what it actually means to be an elite athlete. Um, the sort of... <laughs> the schedules that they put themselves under, the extra swimming sessions, um, things they eat, uh, the way they prioritise their sleep. How had you come about uh, building those uh, relationships and, and talk us through the, what you've got out of, I guess, start with, with Boydy, how is the connection mm. there and how does that look? Yeah, yeah so Boydy obviously is high performance manager at Hawks and then I just sort of was talking to Warmps one day. I was like, I want to sort of talk to Boydie um, about maybe doing placement at the club. And then he sort of asked Boydie. Boydie said, yeah, you can give me his number sort of thing. And then 
Uh, I've put it in a way to sort of get this internship at the club to do my placement hours and stuff. And then he was like, are you asking for a job sort of thing? And then I was like, oh, I'd love to just buy you lunch and a coffee or whatever, like, and just pick your brains type thing. Um, and I think the way I approached that conversation, it wasn't like, can you give me something for nothing type thing? I was like, mate, I just want to have a conversation, just have a yak and learn a bit and, um, see like what you're sort of thinking and stuff like that or buy lunch. Um, we just had a coffee once and then it just led to every few months. I didn't see him for a while cause he was in the hub and stuff like that. What about with, um, with your career, what has been some of your biggest challenges so far and what have you, what have you learned from it? Yeah. The challenges are probably the, um, one, it's like a whole lot of it is luck. Um, and that although like, we live in a culture of, um, scarcity and just rushing to things and needing, um, to be in a certain position. So the challenges are the constant sort of pursuit of growth and realizing how much there is to know, um, before you, you get to where you want to be. Um, and that's always really, really humbling, um, considering I want to be a HPM one day. Um, just having knowledge about the sort of sports science, the S and C, the rehab, um, and then how to build um, a team and manage a team, um, how to own a floor. Um, there, there is just so much more that you sort of need to know that you don't actually realise until you sort of stumble upon it. 